Now, for more on the topic, I spoke to Steve Silberman. He was this year's keynote speaker at the UN's World Autism Awareness Day. And he's the author of Neurotribes, The Legacy of Autism and the Future of Neurodiversity, which comes out in paperback next week. He began by explaining what the unemployment landscape for people with autism looks like today. The unemployment rate among autistic adults is very high, and even among uh, the adults who do have jobs, the pay is very low, average of about 8, 10 an hour, which is not enough to survive in this economy. So there's a tremendous amount of work to be done, but the good news is that some companies are starting to do it. And you did mention that it, that it is changing, that things are improving. What are some of the things that employers are doing to improve those outcomes? Well, one of the most wonderful things is there's a giant uh, multinational software company called SAP, and they have committed themselves to hiring thousands of autistic employees in the coming years. And their pilot program in India was so successful that they're launching similar efforts in seven countries. And uh, for them, it's not an act of charity. As the head of the program in the US, Jose Velasco told me, this is not about charity. It's about maximizing profits and building value for our stockholders because autistic employees tend to be very, very loyal and very, very good at what they do. So if you're an employer and you're trying to understand how to really bring out the best in your employee and recognize those gifts, what are some things that employers can do? Well, uh, autism is a disability, and we know how to accommodate uh, other forms of disability. And so for autistic employees, accommodations that are important uh, are not expecting them to want to socialize around the water cooler like uh, so-called neurotypical employees do, uh, give them a quiet space, uh, allow them to, for instance, see a daily schedule ahead of time because autistic people generally don't like surprise. But if you create a sort of circle of support, as SAP calls it, around each autistic employee, then they can use the gifts of their atypical minds, which, as you mentioned, uh, include uh, a very intense focus on their work and also uh, enhanced abilities, in, uh, sometimes in science and math. Uh, autistic employees can really be a boon to your company. Now, we do tend to see a lot more support for younger children, but perhaps not as much when people get into adulthood and start actively look, looking for employment. So what do you think, perhaps, when people with autism are trying to enter the workforce, what do you say are some of the real challenges that they face when trying to navigate their career landscape? That's an excellent point. Um, you know, the, the, the interesting thing is that if you look at a list of things not to do in a job interview, like you're supposed to make eye contact, you're supposed to shake hands firmly, et cetera, you're supposed to charm the interviewer across the desk. These are the very things that autistic people find uh, very difficult often. So one of the things that SAP has done is to completely reinvent the recruitment process so that autistic employees get to show their potential and their dedication through the promise of their work. And they've done things like um, testing uh, potential em employees' problem-solving abilities using Lego Mindstorm robots. And uh, as many people can tell you, a lot of autistic people love Lego. And they can really demonstrate their passion and their ability uh, in ways that are appropriate to them, rather than expecting autistic people to be able to charm an interviewer across a desk. Now, being that there is that misunderstanding sometimes about what people expect from a, a, a traditional employee versus someone who's on the autism spectrum, what would you say are some of the misperceptions then about autistic people trying to enter the workforce or, or in, these, in these career landscapes? Well, as you point out, one of the biggest misconception about, misconceptions about autism is that it's just about children. So even just including autistic adults in the recruitment process is a major step forward. But also, people have a lot of wacky ideas about autism that are sort of holdovers from the 20th century, like that they lack empathy or emotion or a sense of humor. All of that is completely wrong. Autistic people can actually be hysterical and, and extremely witty. Uh, but what they're not good at is processing uh, real-time interactions socially. And the good news is that we've all become used to collaborating digitally in the 21st century, so in a sense, 
we've already made one of the major changes that can make a place of employment a, a better place for autistic employees. We all know how to work together digitally. And for autistic employees, working together on the internet is almost like a native mode of communication because you don't have to do eye contact, you don't have to process body language in real time, et cetera. So in a sense, the world is becoming more friendly to autistic people already. And so we just have to leverage that to give autistic people the leg up they need into the workplace. If you had to think of one main priority that people should be working on when it comes to really helping boost employment for the autistic community, what would you recommend? I would say uh, reinvent your recruitment process so that it doesn't automatically filter out autistic employees and people with autistic traits. Think about other ways that potential employees can demonstrate their potential for your company. That would be a huge step forward for autistic people.